We're going to consider two types of boundaries in dealing with wave reflection. The first is a fixed boundary. This drawing on the left here shows a wall and we've attached a rope to it and we've given a pulse to that rope. And so while each bit of this rope simply goes up and then down, the pulse travels perpendicular to that. So clearly this is a transverse wave. It turns out that when a wave hits a fixed boundary, it's going to be reflected back. And when it's reflected back, the wave is inverted. You can see that when the wave is traveling to the left toward the wall, the amplitude is above the equilibrium position. And as the wave travels back to the right, away from the wall, as in the lower picture, the amplitude is below the equilibrium position. The other type of boundary is a free boundary. And we've tried to model that here by imagining this thick red line on the left as being a pole. And this is a ring around the pole, and the ring is connected to the rope. So that when each bit of this rope goes up and then down, when the wave gets to the ring, the ring clearly can slide up and down the pole. So the ring will slide up and it'll slide down, unlike with a fixed boundary, way over here on the left, that bit of rope is stuck to the wall right there. It won't move. Whereas in a free boundary, the end of the rope can go up and then come back down. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to send a pulse wave to the left along this rope and what's going to happen is this wave too will be reflected but it will be reflected upright so when a fixed boundary is present waves are reflected and they're inverted when free boundaries are present waves are reflected again but they're upright